Albans Residents Association. Emma. Are you staying sitting at the table for the Courtney Street as well? I am, yes. Yep, that's great. Yep. Good. Here all day. No, that's Brought great. That's great. <laughs> oh, I feel so inclusive. I feel she's around. Sorry, just while we sort of act out, my name's Jonathan Cawthon. This is a, uh, the first time I've seen a number of you around the council table. I'd like to say, well done. Um, the election was something that certainly warned me off trying for local politics, and I don't envy you your, your job in dealing with a situation that's likely to be thankless and with a bottom line that's going to be tighter than a simile that I'm not going to elaborate on. <laughs> we just enjoy it. We enjoyed your campaigning, that is all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't do it again, but I'll be there for your entertainment next time anyway. <laughs> um, I'd just like to take. To, oh, uh, sorry, <laughs> just also like to introduce, uh, introduce Hine, uh, Hine Moki. She's um, a member of our committee as well. So. Hello. I wrote you guys a letter about the footpaths. Excellent. <laughs> so we've, we've got a number of things that are uh, included in our paper submission, and it is fairly detailed, so I'm not going to sit here and read um, straight off it because there is a fair bit there and we've only got a certain amount of time. Um, I'd just like to say by starting that St Albans as a community that we represent is, well, it's a little bit special. Um, it is the first suburb north of the central city and a lot of the, um, the rebuild is, uh, picked, uh, is pitched at rebuilding the central city and making it a jewel. Well, around the jewel you've got to have a setting and I think St Albans is quite an important part of the central city setting. Um, it, it does have main roads coming into it from, from the north and it is often, uh, it adds up to the general picture of people who are visiting Christchurch. St Albans has an enormous amount of potential as being one of those suburbs that um, we want to make Melbourne look like some weird outback town. Uh, we want Christchurch to be cosmopolitan, we want it to be funky, we want it to be a New York style village. Well St Albans has got the capability of being one of those villages. and uh, it's. It's populated by people who um, are enthusiastic about living in Christchurch. They've stayed here, they've resisted the temptation to move out to places like Pegasus and Rangura and Woodend and Kaiapoi and, uh, and Rolleston. But we also sadly have to endure them travelling through Christchurch, or through St Albans twice a day. Um, it's, a city, it's a suburb that's um, taken a bit of a kicking in terms of its earthquake effects. Um, it's suffered as much as the eastern suburbs. But it's also had the, the very well publicised um, flooding episodes and I'd like to also thank Mary Wilson for allowing you in particular, um, Madam Mayor, to uh, get at least four words out before she interrupted <laughs> in the interviews. <laughs> Fockton's uh, just one part of the overall picture of St Albans and yeah. it's, it is something that we do address in this plan. But it's, it's only one of the things that, um, that St Albans has facing it. Um, we have a community identity that goes back to the very foundations of Christchurch. And St Albans as a community is being redefined uh, fairly soon when the, the council addresses this, but it has been there all along. It, whether it's Edgware or whether it's Maraho or whether it's Shirley, there's, there's a lot of conjecture and we'd like to, um, to ask the council to give it some consideration that St Albans is its own community and it does have an enthusiastic staff of volunteers. Well, staff is entirely the wrong word. Yes. Volunteer is, um, is the citizens in St Albans who do a lot of work for the community but uh, we are asking that the council do take this into account and uh, give those volunteers some support. Now part of that is the community grants funding. There are a number of projects within St Albans that are um, listed in our, um, in our submission and we, we, we need the council's help. We need the council's help in, uh, in an area that it is um, being tested currently with its um, the very well publicised $500 million shortfall. Personally, I recommend you could uh, save $230 million by kicking the stadium to touch, but that's not part of it. Um, we, we do need money, we do need help, we do need the staff. We need uh, not just the council table, but we need the council staff themselves to, um, to lend us a hand. It's, it's a big part of what we do. We need... Um, need the council to help us. I think I'd like to just add there that um, I think um, the history of the St Albans community and the vo involvement of the people and the volunteers goes back 50 odd years um, in, the, in the area and with the current situation that we've got at the moment uh, I think St Albans could prove itself to be a community that would be uh, very supportive of the 
the council and the direction it's taking, but also very capable of actually doing a lot of the work itself um, and making the city um, a place that people want to come to without taking too much resource from the city. Mm -hmm. So, and we'd like to, we'd really like to be involved in doing that and making mm. this a place that's um, a great place to live. And part of that example is the St Albans Community Centre. If you drove past it on the way, and I realise you guys have been here all day, it's been a fairly long day of listening to submissions. But if you, um, as you, if you drove past the St Albans Community Centre, as we did on the way here, it's currently shut. Um, that was not the way it used to be. It used to be open. There used to be someone there. And you've got a, a crew of, uh, of volunteers who are, pre are perfectly prepared to administer it and keep it open for the community so it can be used. Um, but again, we need the council's help in order to, to get in there and get it open. Um, the St Albans Community Centre is uh, the nerve centre of what um, Sari used to do in the community. And uh, the fact that it's closed in a post-earthquake environment where we're trying to strengthen communities, that's just untenable, yeah. to be perfectly honest. I think um, th there is no space. I, I look at um, communities from uh, around the beach areas and so forth. They have spaces they can naturally go to. In an area like St... In a, in an urban area like St Albans, we don't have anywhere we can actually meet without having to go through a booking system or paying for something. So it makes, um, it makes those connections within community very difficult. Uh, it makes um, sharing information very difficult and it makes building relationships very difficult. So it's really important that we have that back so we can um, help start our community recover. Yeah, an example of that is the Oscar After Schools uh, program that currently has no home. It's just been made homeless by St Albans Primary School and it's a very important part of the, um, the childcare for a number of parents who do work in St Albans. Uh, if the community centre was open, Oscar would have a home and it would solve a lot of people's problems. We also have a number of um, issues with our green spaces, with our community uh, facilities and spaces. St Albans Park is a mire. You can't walk across it without gumboots. The sad fact is the nose pig. And a nose yeah. pig, yeah. The sad fact is that uh, a lot of Christchurch was built on a swamp, and that's why we've got Pukekos on our coat of arms. Um, St Albans Park is just diabolical. Even in summer, um, I was a resident of um, Barbados Street, just 100 metres away from the, uh, the park, digging post holes. You've only got to go down half a metre to get to the water table. And you'll know better than anyone with the, the Flockton Basin issues. Incidentally, Flockton Basin was never called that prior to the flooding. Nobody had even heard of it. Um, it's, it's a situation that needs solving and we don't have a lot of green spaces, we don't have a village green that's, um, that's currently up and operating. Um, you know the, the saga of the Edgware Pool, um, it just needs a bit of love, St Albans, in, in terms of that, um, that sort of green space and village green that um, people need to commune on. We've, we've actually just lost another village green um, where the pool site is with the, uh, the drilling of the water wells. So it's been closed off um, to the community for about the last four months, um, and the people lead it, the volunteers leading that um, group have fallen over. They um, pulled the pin, and so again another community space within St Albans that, due to not being able to find any common ground um, with the council, it's been lost. So another loss for our community as well. Mm. And just before I start blathering about transport, uh, because St Alban is, uh, is afloat and it does have an arterial route through it, uh, there's a lot of uh, residents who are experiencing heightened levels of earthquake stress because of large uh, vehicles coming down the, the street. Your whole house does move. You don't know whether it's another earthquake that's going to knock your socks off or if it's just a truck going past. Um, and, and I'll add that to that as well for the safety. I mean, Hene just told me a story yesterday. I don't know if you are aware of Courtney Street, which we'll be talking about later, but um, Hene has to use Courtney Street to get around. Um, and she told me last night when I was dropping her off after our meeting that when she can't get down the footpath because of the pothole, she goes down, down the street. And it's like, you know, the fastest recorded speed down that little 300 metre stretch of road is 98 kilometres an hour. So every time she's doing that, she's putting her life at risk. Can I also just point out that Hina is prohibited by government for putting lights or reflectors on her uh, wheelchair? Yes, that is their policy at the moment. But she can't go down the footpath. Mm. It's, it's fairly stark. Uh, in terms of transport as well, um, St Albans is uh, about to lose two bus services, the 118 and the, the Metro Star, which are... Um, Connects New Brighton, so we don't have access to the beach by a bus and there's a lot of people on slow, low incomes who love going to the bus, to the beach and they can't do that 
but we have access to Littleton Port and people like going to Littleton as well. And if we don't have those choices of being a typical Kiwi, how are we supposed to be a typical Kiwi? Like so, so, sorry, you lost a bus service. Yeah, we're going to lose the metro staff. Two services. So that's and the, is that it can? Yeah. 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 And okay. the thing is, the beauty of the bus service is it, it connects the elderly with their family and yeah, friends. No, no, I, but it, it does contribute to the overall transport picture of uh, St Albans. That, um, and Albans does gets that. a lot of tourists because we're the home of the Crusaders and the um, Dragons, so we get a lot of tourists. And it's nice to see the income and engage with St Albans residents. Yeah. Because St Albans has no inaccessible buildings. Right. And it's suburb, which is quite unpleasing. But however, if you look at the be accessible thing, it's a government policy, and I don't think that will work for the residents of Christchurch because of what happened with the central government. Yeah. So that's not going to work, so it needs to be a social change attitude. Because last year, St Albans was part of the Inclusive Communities Project run by the Human Rights Commission, and we did a lot of education and connecting, and I led that project, and people understood I got people to understand what it's like from their family's perspective, from the, uh, their grandmother. How would your grandmother get around if there was no cut downs? And people connected on that way. Mm. And every time I speak to one of my elderly residents, they connect to me through understanding what access is like. And mm. that never happened when I came in a week after the earthquake. I got treated like a stranger. Right. But now I'm someone else. Right. Mm. OK. And there are several other transport and access related issues that are highlighted in that report. But I'd just like to uh, go back to the idea of that New York style village that we want uh, Christchurch to be very cool. Um, we'd also like to, uh, the council to give consideration to extend the tram network into, uh, into Edgeware. Mm. Uh, it's, there's endless amounts of possibilities there and potential. Uh, it, it could be a, a jewel of a suburb. Um, and and you're, you're, also, uh, your ten sorry. minutes on the on this one's kind of up. Oh, okay. sure. I don't know whether you want to kind of share a little bit. We were going to take five more minutes of Courtney Street time to put to the St Albans. You you can you can we're do it that gift, way. If, if, you, if you want to if you want to look at the two submissions as a total amount, keep going. Okay. Yep. okay. Yep. Well, well, to be fair, I think. Um, I've said my piece about that. It's all in front of you in paper, and yep. uh, we, we appreciate your consideration. But um, I'll, I'll hand over onto the, the more Courtney Street uh, aspect. Well, before I go back on, uh, go to the Courtney Street, I'd just like to add to that um, this whole St Albans community identity. It's been very strong for uh, since Christchurch began. I mean, there was Christchurch City, and there was St Albans City that sat right beside it. Um, it was its own city when it when it first started. And, um, and St Albans is in a borough, uh, sorry, in a, um, a ward that looks outward. Yeah. So going towards our identity, I think that's a big issue for our community because we've actually always been connected to the city. Yeah. St Albans area has always been connected to the city and that's where, and, and, and the way the structure of the city is at the moment, we're made to look outward. And I think in the new boundary changes and things that I think I think are coming up very soon, we'd love to be involved in that conversation yeah. to see our community be situated correctly within the within the city. You're speaking my language. This is the new way of doing a representation review that we're working on. We yeah. would love to be involved in that. Excellent. And, and you help. will be. And you will be. Yeah. Probably Kenna leading the way. Volunteers. volunteers. It's free yeah. labour, but uh, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's connected labour. Labor. Well, what 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 is it? I mean, I, I won't tell you what I want. You know what I want. Um, okay. I want communities really... to to define themselves and to mm. look around at their assets and at their neighbours and decide how a proper planning environment, or what a proper planning environment and a voting environment would look like at around 50,000 people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How's that? That's great. Good. That's great. I think, well, I think um, St Albans has about 22, the area that we recognise as St Albans, which yep. is very different to what the council <coughs> recognises in their community profiles at the present time. The community profiles actually cut our St Albans in half. Right. And um, yeah, I think uh, we recognise there's about 22,000 homes in the St Albans area, so. Excellent. Yeah. All right. So that's about 50,000 people. Oh, Vicky and. Well, we've got one more part of the equation, so. Yes. Do, do, you, want uh, to, do, do you want to deal with the whole lot together? Yes, uh, so just uh, Courtney Street? Yep. Okay, so and then we can we can have questions across the lot. Yeah. Okay, so Courtney Street. Um, I'm uh, here, Maggie uh, um, Tairakana, from Courtney Street. Um, we have um, our road, Courtney Street, is classified as a um, collector road. 
uh, but it functions as a local road. This is um, a hangover from the 1960s, from a plan from the 1960s, and we'd really like to see the name of our, the, the classification of our road changed from, um, from a collector back to a local um, to um, provide security for our community, which includes nine children, three um, people over the age of 80, um, a school, a whole school of children right beside it, um, an English park on the other, um, sorry not English park anymore, ANZ, ASB park on the other side, uh, a community that wants to look at um, walking, cycling as methods of moving around it rather than being um, there for cars. So we'd love to see that classification changed, please. Right, okay, questions now. I've got Vicky, then Jimmy. Uh, and uh, and Phil, I'm really sorry that your own councillors aren't here to, th this afternoon. They were here all day I saw, today. We saw them on yeah, the way out. They had another meeting. I was yeah. listening to Ali on the radio on the way here, actually. <laughs> see how see see how quick see how quickly things happen round here now. Now that we try, it is great to see. <laughs> okay, Vicky. <laughs> A um, couple of things. Um, the, the St Albans Community Centre, what's actually stopping the rebuild? Sorry? The St Albans Community <laughs> Centre that you've yes. mentioned here, what's actually stopping the, the, it being open? Uh, Access. To be fair, uh, at the moment there's a system where whoever wants to use the community centre has to go up to the, um, the service centre up in Papua Nui to get the key open the community centre, use it, then drop the key back and then come back to St Albans. The community want to run it themselves. Yeah. Like yes. they used which is a 16 to. kilometre round trip which can often be performed in um, heavy traffic. Yes, We've exactly. gone to the community board and I'd like to acknowledge uh, Mike Davidson's here and we are trying to work through that at the moment so, together. So there's no physical uh, reason why no. the thing can't be used? It no. is just physical, we have to drive there. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 yeah. I totally get that. But no. that's just a no, there are lunatic some reason. Yeah, okay. It's, right. it's because of it's some issues decision. with the past council um, unfortunately we weren't involved oh, I remember your discussion yeah. about that we weren't yes. involved in the placement of the new building on the site we were left out of that um, discussion and the management agreement between the city council and ourselves was broken um, with it by by the last council yeah, and we're trying to go through a process at the moment um, with the uh, current community board and it is a positive process um, it is fairly open. We do have to jump through a few hoops in terms of ten, uh, tendering to um, to um, administer the building, but what? it's a it's a group of volunteers who are uh, looking at tendering. trying to help. We would really just like the key. Yeah, yeah. yeah really. Well, I mean, uh, well, we've got the chair for the chairman of the community board coming next. We might yeah. ask him. Yeah, our, our community <laughs> fatigue is huge in our communities. Our volunteers yeah, yeah, yeah. are pulling over our programs. No, 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 uh, the, the, uh, we want to try and help now. Yeah. So yeah. a key would be handy. And a okay. staff member. That's because I'm just intrigued, and it's not really a council issue. Are you really not allowed to put reflectors on your wheelchair? No. Really? Yes, really. What happens if you do? Um, well, it could, I think there might be some law and stuff, but I'm trying to try and change it. I'm in the process of getting a new one. It's going to take six weeks. Right. Um, Tim. Oh, sorry. Jimmy was next. Sorry. Apologise. Uh, quickly, two questions. Uh, first one, you request council, you know, to that of the kind of uh, items. I'm concerned where for each item do you have a kind of a plan, plan and cover the time frame, priorities, and also cost, uh, fundraising, et cetera, or council is your unique source of the funding? Um, I think we do have a plan. I mean, it, again, it's, it's difficult to get it together because of the fatigue, but um, we have it, we've put, to, so we went out and out, we've, um, we surveyed our community. We've come up with what they want us to do. Uh, we're also looking at we're, um, putting some effort and resources into studying um, into um, social enterprise because uh, the one lesson that we've learned post earthquake is that we actually need to support ourselves. But at the present time, it's just a wee bit difficult to get to, to do that as well as keeping all our other projects going as well. So what the St Albans Residents Association is looking at doing is actually 
um, building a social enterprise around a barbecue trailer that we've had funded, and so and we're just about to put a um, a structure, a little sort of structure with that too, so that we can actually um, go out and make money. Yeah, and Sarah has its own no, strategic um, planning for issues that it raises, including the community yeah. centre. Um, we're going to run out of time, so Tim. Um, just quickly, what was the um, outcome of the reclassification of Courtney Street? Was is it still in lim was it successful? Or? It was uh, the reclassification of the actual name hasn't been done. We were told at the time of the resource consent that um, that was something that we had to come and deal with through the annual plan um, process. So we got a resource consent to um, build the road as a local road. Mm -hmm. So the road is being built when it's being built um, as a local road, but it still has the collector road status on it. Right. So the design is as a, as a local road through the resource consent process, and the classification is still a collector road. So is the classification going to be changed? Is that, do you That's know? what we're asking for yeah. the council oh, to do. Oh, we've we've, we've, we've just yeah. left a wee note here. That yeah. Yeah. But it yeah. seems it's just, yeah. Vicky's just come up with an idea that we should have a... Um, Things we can fix in a day day. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you publicise it. Do it on the street. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Start with the Courtney Street yeah. roundabout. Yeah. Yeah. It's a high street. Yeah. But, uh, well, I'm sorry, but we're, we're, we're at the end of our time. But look, thank you oh, very much. Well, thank you all for your question. time. Well, Please. But, but, but there was a, well, there was Yanni a, was going to be another question. If, well, sorry, this was a re reference to something if you don't. Don't um, with your indulgence, please. Oh, God. That well, if I have to indulge to, you, I have to indulge just, everyone. I'll be brief. He referred, I think, just briefly that a, about a staff member, and I just wondered: is is your association like an example of a group who needs perhaps some seeding funding, so that in fact you can have someone work with you, and that that person and be paid for? We did have Absolutely. a staff member. We, we, we actually had uh, five staff before yeah. the earthquake. Um, yeah, we were, I mean, like, there's a lot of projects I think there's that some involved history, in everything. There? Yeah. There's so much history I could be here all day. Yeah. But it's positive, we want to look forward, not back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Yanni? I say, um, so the new council is no. really keen to look forward. So um, there have been previous issues here, but I think the key thing is what are we doing going forward? So as chair of the community committee, I've already asked for a, an, out, uh, an explanation from staff about oh. the access, how many people are using the centre how they access it. Oh, the community board are picking no. it No, no, no. I just think, but I also think we've, we've, got a, we've got to truncate that. Yeah, it's going yeah. to happen. No, no, no. But, but, we're, no, but please, just we, we actually need to truncate yeah, those no, sort agree, of processes. I agree. On a, on a di different note, just to point out, um, because we've heard the issue of accessibility come up, so we have actually had a committee structure now with the community committee has a specific term of reference to include disability, mm -hmm. and we are doing work with the disability sector to get um, the issues highlighted and raised further up at a government's yeah. level. So I think that's a real I'm positive I'm on the CCS well. Disability Action Access yep. Committee chair. Cool. As so, well as my many other roles. Yeah. So Very the new council is really keen to be more proactive in that space. We are. But agreed. Looking right. forward, not back. And we'll, 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 we'll move on. Thank you very, very Thank much. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah.